Hello viewers, you're welcome to this very important lecture on how to write a very good IT report. This lecture is intended to assist certain students that are finding it difficult to, to write a very good industrial training report after doing the IT. Many students are actually finding it difficult to uh, write reports that can end in very good maths. So the lecture mm -hmm. is intended to help such students to present their reports in a way that will end them good, good maths. The industrial training report is a very important element in the assessment of uh, students that have undergone industrial training. Students will be assessed based on the contents, presentation, and also the writing format. So the contents of the IT report is very important and the presentation in the writing format is very important. That's why this lecture is presented to assist students to do well in writing such industrial training reports. So we want to look at the report content, what the report should contain, what the industrial training or IT report should contain. The industrial training report should contain one, a cover page, the acknowledgement, the executive summary, table of contents, introduction, company profile, project details, other project tasks, recommendations, conclusion, as well as references, daily tax reports, and appendices. So we want to now look at each of these tasks, a brief explanation of the report contents. We want to look at a brief explanation of each of these report contents, of these contents of the industrial training report. The first one we want to look at is the cover page. The cover page, what should the cover page contain? The cover page should include name of department and university, course name, student name, matriculation number, and duration of industrial training. Now here's an example, you can use the example, Department of Biological Sciences, Niger Delta in West Wilberforce Island, Bias State, Nigeria, then uh, industrial students, industrial work experience, the uh, degree, then the name of the student. For instance, James Andrew and the matriculation number of the student. Then the duration of the industrial training, for instance, January to June, 2023. This should be what should be contained in the cover. That should be what the cover page should have. The next content of the industrial training report is the acknowledgement. The acknowledgement basically uh, should include vote, vote of thanks to individuals, including academic and industrial supervisors. Okay, you thank, you're expected to thank those that have helped you before and during the industrial training exercise. Okay, you thank them for their assistance. Or you can even thank the organization for the help they rendered during the industrial training session. Okay, for accepting you and for imparting the knowledge, the practical skills you require. And the acknowledgement should not exceed one page. The acknowledgement page should not, it should just be one page. The next content is the executive summary. The executive summary. Now the executive summary of the industrial training report should be very brief. Okay, it should have a brief report of the industrial training and it should also have, should also have conclusion on the report should also have the uh, conclusion you get from the industrial training program. Conclusion on the industrial training program, okay? Then the student should also uh, write a brief explanation of the importance of the final report. The importance of the final report should also be included in the report. Then the next is part of the IT report is the table of contents. 
the table of contents basically is a list of contents of the industrial training together with page numbers based on the student's report. So it's a list of contents of the IT report you've already written along with the page number. For instance, uh, company profile, the page number. Okay, in chapter one, introduction, the page number. It's supposed to, uh, just as it is in textbooks. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be written. Then the next aspect of the industrial training report is the introduction, which is usually written as chapter one of the report. It's usually written as chapter one of the industrial training report. And what should the introduction include? It should have definition of the meaning of industrial training, a definition of the meaning of industrial training, and they also expect to describe the objectives of undergoing industrial training. The student is also expected to describe the objectives of undergoing the industrial training. Students should also briefly explain the purpose and need of the report in the introduction in the chapter one. So first you define what industrial training means. Industrial training is this, 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 this. If possible, you also write about the history of how, why, and how the industrial training came about, the objectives of undergoing industrial training. Then you should also include a brief explanation of the purpose and need of the IT or industrial training report. Then chapter two contains the company profile. In chapter two, the students expected to write about the company profile. And this should include information about the organization or the company that the student had been attached for industrial training. Students should describe the vision and mission of the company, which you can get from, the, from where you're doing your IT or where you did your IT. They would not hesitate to tell you or to give you the vision and mission of the company. Then also the organization structure and products and services that are offered by the organization and company. Then the environment where the company is established and also functions of the organization and company should be included in this aspect of the report. Chapter three, which is project details, is the most important part of the IT report. It is the most important content to be included in an IT report because it contains a detailed description of what you're supposed to do. In this part, students should explain in detail the tasks that were carried out during the industrial training program. That you should include details of the tasks that were carried out during the industrial training program. It is a detailed description of work done. Okay, so you are supposed to describe in detail the work you have done. For instance, my little parasite test, you write it as a title and you explain it in detail. The purpose of the test, the apparatus or reagents that were used, and then the procedure from beginning to end and how results are being interpreted should also be included. The report should include the uh, units and departments that the students have worked, the sections of the company or the organization that the student has worked, and it should also have a detailed description of work or tests or tasks that were done. So it should be divided into departments, okay? For instance, for some that may have opportunity to work in the Biotechnology Development Center, OD, Bias State in Nigeria, you could have uh, uh, the, the, that Biotechnology Development Center is divided into departments. You have the scenario department, you have the uh, mushroom production department, you have the aquaculture department, you have the plant tissue culture department, and uh, many other hepatology departments and many other, the, even the laboratory. Okay, so students that do IT in such a place are uh, given opportunity to move from one department to another to learn. So such a report should include, should be divided into departments and units, okay, departments, units, sessions that you worked, okay, 
maybe the aquaculture department. You liked what you did in the aquaculture department, for instance, uh, the production of fingerlings, then the, the rearing of the fish, okay? And how you change water, how you feed the fish and other, other things should be included. Then in the scenario department, you also include what has been done in the scenario department. For those that do their uh, IT in the lab, for instance, you would have a hematological department, hematology department, big labs, hematology department, microbiology department. Then you also have uh, yeah, other departments. So for instance, in the hematology department, it would have tests like full blood count, and uh, wider tests and others. So you uh, take the department and then the test, for instance, full blood count. Then you explain the procedure for carrying out full blood count, okay, step by step. You define, uh, define full blood count and the purpose of the full blood count, then the apparatus you require the reagents, then the procedure, you explain it from beginning to end. Same thing is applicable to wider tests that's used for tests to test for typhoid. You check, you, you expect it to write what the test is for and the, the reagents, the apparatus, then the procedure from beginning to end. And how the results are being interpreted should be written in detail. Then if you have any picture that you have taken before, you should also include it. So the main points are as follows. Explanation of the scope of the task, description of the objectives of the task, and detailed description of the procedure for carrying out the tasks or tests or projects. Detailed description of the procedure for carrying out the tests or tasks or projects. So you describe it in detail. This may include pictures, diagrams of figures. So after describing, you can include pictures. If you are taking pictures while doing your IT, for instance, in any of the sessions or while carrying out the tasks, you include such a picture. Or you can take a picture, for instance, of a petri dish when you're preparing media or when organisms have been cultured, for example, in the my microbiological, uh, microbiology section of the lab. Okay, you also include such pictures and figures. Identification of the tax or project opportunities should also, it's also very paramount. For instance, if you did your research in the Biotechnology Development Center and you worked in the mushroom production section, you should know the prospects you have with that knowledge you've acquired, that practical knowledge. With that, you can, after graduation or even before graduation, set up and such a, a place where you can be producing mushrooms. Or if you have worked in the aquaculture session, you should have an idea of what you can do with that knowledge of rearing fish, how you can make money from it, the prospects, the project opportunities should be thought of. Or if you have done your research in the lab, the opportunities you have with that knowledge should also be stated when after describing the, the, the work you have done. Okay. Then chapter four, will now have other projects or tasks. Chapter four will now have other projects or tasks. Students may include other tasks or projects assigned by the industry-based supervisor during the IT program, okay? They may include other projects or other tasks or projects assigned by industry-based supervisor during the IT program. For instance, some students may be assigned to, uh, for instance, breed fish fingerlings, specifically as an assignment to breed that uh, the fish to produce fingerlings, and then to to culture such fish or to take care of such fish until they grow to a certain stage as a specific project, not as a, a general learning process, but as a specific project. If such is done in any of the organizations where you did the, your IT, you should also include that. Then recommendations should also be included. Sometimes conclusion and recommendations can be written as one chapter, chapter five, 
but you may want to separate them. Okay, so students should identify the problems or limitations of the projects or tasks or even the company or organization and make appropriate recommendations to solve the problems. If there are some problems or some lapses you observed that uh, uh, found in the place to do did your IT or the task, you are expected to uh, identify them and state how those problems can be solved. State how those problems should be solved. Then chapter six is conclusion, your conclusion, the conclusion. The conclusion consists of the summary of the whole industrial training experience. The conclusion is the summary of the whole industrial training experience. So you, you summarize all that you have learned and uh, the benefits you derived from the industrial training program. The next aspect of your IT report after writing the conclusion is the bibliography or references. The bibliography or re references. Relevant references used in the report, such as books, websites, journals, articles, and so on, should be included in your report. You should write it as a headed references. It should, it should begin from a separate page, and then you write the references. Now, there are several standards of well-established systems for writing references or bibliography. You know, many, many students do not know how to write references. So I want to now explain how you can write your references. They start the referencing method that's being used here and the, the, the uh, appropriate way to write such references. The first uh, referencing method is the Harvard system. The Harvard system of writing references. We also have the American Psychological Association, that's APA system of referencing. The APA system of referencing, then the Macro Hill system of referencing reports. Then we also have the Modern Languages Association system of writing referencing, references and the footnote system. Among all of these references, the American Psychological Association, that's APA system, of referencing is the one that's, that's, that's used in the Niger Delta University and other university. So below are the standard formats and examples for basic referencing information recommended for the American Psychological Association, that's APA system, which is commonly used in the Niger Delta University and, the, and other Nigerian universities. So I want to look at that APA system of referencing of uh, your uh, IT report or even of your projects that you will do later in the final year or any other publication, including book or journals you publish subsequently. Now, example, the format for publishing books. The format includes one, you should start with the author's name, then the author's surname, followed by the first name, the first name should be could either be full or should be written in initials. Usually, it's usually written. It's written. It's only the initials that are written. Then you now put a full stop and write the year of publication. Then full stop. Then you now write the book title. Then additional information. Then city of publication. The city the article was published. Then you also write the publishing company and the page number. The publishing company and the page number should also be written. Now, here's an example. It's a book published by Alan TB. So the author's surname is written in full, then the uh, other names are abbreviated. Then with the full stop followed by the year the, the book was published, then the title of the book, the book title, which is Vanishing Wildlife of North America. Then full stop, followed by the city, city of publication, which is Washington, DC. Then the publishing company, National Geographic Society, followed by the page number, that's PP. You page, the page number of book is usually written as PP, which is page 20 to 23. 
pages 20 to 23. Then if you're, what, if you're a reference, if you got information from encyclopedia or dictionary, here's the reference in format. First, you write the author's surname, followed by the first name or the initial of the first name or other names, then the year of publication, then the title of the article, then title of the encyclopedia. And here's an example. You have uh, Azumathal Aquidistant Production. Okay, that's uh, in the, the author's name. is representing the author's name. Representing the author's name. Then year of publishing. Then the uh, title of the encyclopedia, which is Mary, uh, Miriam Webster's College of Dictionary, 10th edition. That's the dictionary. Okay, the title of the dictionary. Now, the what of journals, magazines, and news articles? These ones are ref the format for referencing this is one you start with the author's surname, followed by the first name, which is uh, mostly written in, uh, in, uh, with initials, then the year of publication, the title of the article, the name of the journal, which should be written in italics. The name of the journal should be written in italics or periodic title, then followed by the volume number and page numbers. It here is an example, uh, an article that was written by Udidion O.M. Okay, that's the, use, uh, the author's surname then the initials of the other names. Then the year of publication, 1999. Then the title of the article, Restoration of Stream Ecosystem Integrity in a Python State, Nigeria. Then followed by the journal article, which is written in italics, the title of the article, and sorry, the name of the journal article, which is written in italics, Journal of Environmental Sciences, followed by the volume number and the page numbers, volume 11, pages 63 to 70. Now, the, if you want to reference website or web page, here's the format. You write the author's name, then first name, and initial, if available. In most cases, the author's name is usually not available. Then electronic publication information, the date of publication or the latest update, and the name of any sponsoring institution or organization, and the date access and full URL. Now here's an example. This article was published on the website and it, is, it was published by David Terry in 2021. And the article title is Lightning Angels 4 at Music Festival, the why. Then followed by the date it was accessed, the date it, the article was assessed, which is uh, rated as files. Dot uh, the the day twenty third of January twenty twenty three. That's two thousand and two. Then the full URL is now written. Lastly, the note: the references should be arranged in ascending alphabetical order. When you're writing references should be written in ascending alphabetical order from A to Z. For instance, if the name start, uh, the first, one of the author's name starts with Albert, okay, and we have Bond, okay, Albert should come before Bond. And then the reference should be indented. The second and or third lines should be inside, while the first line should extend outwards. Now, daily task report is this final part. It's one of the parts of the IT report you should write. This consists of the daily tasks that were carried out during the IT as reported in the logbook. So you, you write, you are expected to type what you did each day. Okay, though this is optional depending on the report recommendation of the industrial training coordinator of your department. It's optional, but if it is expected, it is supposed to be written after 
the references, the daily task reports, then the appendices, the appendices. Now, the appendices should contain the following information. Students can attach forms, user manuals, coding, or anything that is related to the tasks or projects and report, okay? Anything, it could be uh, a coding or manuals or um, any of, including forms that were used during the project that are necessary to include them. Sort the different appendices with different names, okay? Each of the appendices should be given a different specific name. For instance, appendix one, then you could have appendix 1A, appendix 1B, then appendix 2, you have B, C, and D, and so on. Now, I want to look at the report writing format. How, what are the requirements? After knowing the procedure for writing or the contents of the report, how should the report be presented? The report must be typed using Times New Roman type of font. The type of font you should use, the font size, the font size should be times New Roman. Sorry, the font type, font type should be times New Roman. Then the font size should be 12, font size 12. And it should have a line spacing of 1.5, line spacing to 1.5. Each of the pages of your report must have a header that's at the top and a page number at the, the page number should be at the right side at the bottom of the page. So each, your report should have a header. For instance, industrial training report by James Andrew okay, at the top. Each of the pages should have that. Then at the bottom, you will now have pages one, two, three, four, five, okay? Then if it's the preliminary pages before chapter one, all the pages should be numbered in Roman numerals, like Roman numerals, like I, 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 and so on. So be numbered in Roman numerals. Now that's the information here. The, the preliminary pages, such as the pages for acknowledgement, executive summary, and table of content, should be numbered with Roman numerals, such as I, 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 respectively. And the main pages should be numbered one, two, three, and so on. Okay, they should be numbered in that pattern, in that way. Your report should be divided into chapters, just as it has been explained. For example, chapter one, introduction, chapter two, complete profile, and so on. Each chapter must begin with a new page. You should not include the chapter, begin a chapter at the middle of the page. You should start from a fresh page. Then, each student from the same organization must write a different report. This is very important because some students usually want to play fast one. They will just run, uh, photocopy what someone else have done and then type only the cover page with their name and matric number. But every other thing is just the same. If you do that, you may lose your mark or both of you may be penalized. So it's very important that you write your own report in your own words, even if you did your IT in the same organization. Even if you did your IT in the same organization, you should write your own report in your own words, not write, not to write the IT, just not to copy what your friend did because you did your IT in the same place. Some students, even if they didn't do their IT in the same organization, even if it's different of me, they'll say, ah, it's the same lab, I will not copy from that person. No. Write your own report in your own words. It will help you and now to, to gain good math. And also in the future, it's a very good training for you to be a very good, uh, very prolific writer. The reports must be bound with soft binding and two copies will be submitted to the Cyrus coordinator of the department. Okay, you should bind your report with soft binding. After binding, we submit two copies. Though in some cases, some industry-based supervisors may require just one copy. Okay, but usually submit two copies. One will be sent to the Cyrus office or be kept in the library while the coordinator keeps copy or the department keeps some copies. So we have discussed the uh, entire process or the requirements, the contents of the IT report. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for watching this video and I urge you to apply 
what you have learned so that you would earn the desired maps for your industrial training report and you thank me later. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch more very educative videos.